GM. It's 15 minutes each plus 10 seconds of move, which is quite a long time limit. Now, the way I've done the repertoire with the English is to stage one is to go and control the light squares, these two squares in the middle of the board, depending on what black does, of course. So normally stage one is knight c3, g3, bishop g2. The thing about the English opening, you can play it with knight to f3. Sometimes you do do that, do do, but sometimes you don't, we'll see. Um, but the thing about the English is it's a very good positional founded move. Nearly all the top players have played the English at some point. Carlson, even Bobby Fischer. I mean, name a person, name, name a top grandmaster who's not played the English. And stage one, it's very simple. We try to go g3. We're trying to control the light squares like this. So I want to break this down into two stages. And of course, you have to adapt to the way your opponent plays. But the good thing is with the English, a bit like the London system, uh, you know, you don't have to spend as much time at the start of the game really working out various plans because you do the same sort of thing against most options. Now, in this position, after this move, there's two ideas that we have. Now, this is the normal move, but the Botfinnic English and what this course is often about is to go E4. Put the pawn on E4. This is generally part of stage two with the knight coming to E2. And I wouldn't go E4 in these positions when black can put the bishop on C5 immediately because uh, the bishop is very good here. But now if I go E4, which I'm going to play, we're actually following Magnus Carlsen versus Fabiano Caruana, the last world championship match. And in that world championship match, Magnus was playing white against Fabiano in this position in the rapid play. And it's the first game he won the world championship match. So we are basing some of the chessable, you know, a lot of some of the chessable lines on the last world championships game. So this is one of the theory because a queen g4 which is all covered in the course. So if he takes here, I take with a D pawn generally, you can take with a B pawn as well. And if he takes here, I'll go queen G4. And queen G4 attack, well, we're gonna see it. Now the way Magnus Carlsen plays this is to take like this. Again, we're following his play. And if he goes knight takes here, there's two ways you can win a pawn, queen D5 or queen G4. Now there was a game which is covered in, in the course again. Of course, we look at all these lines, of course, of course, of course, in the course. And the point after this one, there was a game where Jan, Jan Timman played this as black. And after white took on g7, Jan Timman lost his castling rights. And his, his king was a little bit weak, because let's remember, we've got a dark square bishop. And if you start losing your pawns on dark squares, my bishop becomes... Ooh, that's a nice new colour that chess.com have thrown in there. I like a bit of blue. Not the band. Bloody hate the band blue. I basically hate nearly every boy band but okay let's not go there but um you know you don't want to start you don't want to do this so Blair's gone for the more normal approach and now I'm going to go for a very interesting setup which Magnus Carlsen again championed and the setup that he championed in this position which is quite unique and interesting is not the normal bishop to g2 uh, this is one reason I haven't gone bishop to g2 earlier. In this particular setup, and we've got to adapt to our opponent's moves, the Magnus Carlsen idea, because you've got this big grip on the centre of the board, you could say I have double pawns, but in actual fact, this pawn here is very nice. It controls a knight coming into d4. And I have this half-open file, and I have this nice square on d5 under my control. Later on, I can try to break with c5. But Magnus Carlsen's idea in this position was to play f3, bring the knight to f2, put the knight on this square here, put the bishop on d3, and then even push with g4, g5 later on. So even though the English opening, you start off very in a very solid structure, hence why we just would have called it the, the iron variation, um, Later on, you often get extremely attacking positions. I wouldn't play... I mean, any opening can be interesting. Uh, I, I mean, it doesn't really matter. Everyone thought the London system was very boring, but 
until people started playing it to attack him. And all you do with the English, you get a very good positional foundation where you can't get attacked. You can't get attacked in the English, where you build up your position. And if Black tries to attack you, he will often, nearly always, get in a bad situation early. And we're just going to go for that plan. So I think this is, we're following even a game which is going along the lines of, um, I think Anand played such a move um, against Magnus Carlsen with this one coming down. Now, I have to be honest, when filming the course, some of the lines I know really well. This line I haven't got any experience in over the board. So even if you buy any course, not just that one, the way to master it is to play the positions in the course in practical games. If you can't find a training buddy, this is what this is really, a training buddy. After the game, I'm going to look at what I did right, maybe where I could improve without a computer, and then I'll look at it with a computer. For testing out ideas in a training buddy about your strength is great, you know, if you can find one. Otherwise, you can use a computer, but I, I don't find that as good. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to play the Magnus Carlsen idea. I don't think Blair wants to take here and give me the bishop pair. Uh, that would, that would, maybe I'd change my plan then, because if I got the bishop pair, I want to open up the structure. And I might do that by playing f4 later on and trying to open up the structure. So I'm going to stick with the Magnus Carlsen plan, which is knight f2, bishop d3. This gives me such a great lock in the center of the position. And then my bishop may come to e3, queen d2. I have the side where to castle. I'll look at where my opponent castles. If black castles this way, I may well start pushing over here. I've also got the f4 push. I've also got c5 push. So it's a very interesting way to play this 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 kind of this kind of opening variation here. It's quite it was very rare, like I say, until the last World Championships. A lot of stuff in the English that we look at in the course, it, it's quite modern ideas. But the reason that Magnus Carlsen used to play this line is that he played uh, he played he played the, the reverse variation, the Rosalimo variation of Sicilian in that match. And this is like that, but a tempo up. Now, one thing that the English opening really teaches you is to look at your opponent's ideas, try to work out what they're trying to do, and, and you know, just work against it. Now, here the knight wants to come into this square. I've got to think where I put this bishop. G5 doesn't really help me because of H6. I don't see. But I could actually, I'm just thinking now, if I go bishop G5, H6, and then I move my bishop back to E3, I've kind of created what we could call as a hook. So later on, if I go G4, G5, I can open up the king. But after this move, what if he just ignores that bishop and plays knight C5? Because I kind of want to have the idea of taking that. I mean, B3 might be a good idea in these positions to make sure he can't do anything bishop b3 seems sensible with the idea if he moves the knight to c5 i'll take it and i think that's going to be good but bishop g5 is now a very interesting idea just trying to tempt him into playing this move let's have a look so if he ignores it knight c5 i'll probably play b3 because if a4 i can push on but maybe his knight will come around here. My bishop on g5 is actually not doing anything. So do I even just play this one first? Let's, okay, let, let's play this one first. I'm just thinking of the best move order. I know where I want to put my pieces. I want to put my pieces here, my bishop, something like this. And then we go to the next stage. Because obviously before you, before you really plan in chess... You want to get it into stages so you want to think right i do this stage for these reasons and then the next stage you should know already when you play an opening so my stage at the moment is to develop fully develop my pieces and then i'm going to sort of decide on generally what pawn pushes i'm going to play which again could be any of these guys b4 c5 f4 g4 but we're going to have a look depending on how blair sets up which of those pushes might be the best way to go so Blair, of course, moves the knight here. Now, I'm kind of thinking, what does he want to do? And he might want to go a4, which is a little bit annoying because it stops my pawn coming up the board. So can I go here first? Nice developing move. And then if he goes a4, how is it if I take there? I feel that that structure is quite symmetrical. Can I get an advantage? 
Well, if I take the queens off, his king is misplaced. And we, we don't... Okay, and I also have knight d3. So I think this move, if a4, I go bishop takes here, pawn takes, take the queen off, knight d3 and he has to put his knight here then i got bishop h3 and i'm probably winning a pawn so i'm doing my positional ideas but it was again i think it was even botvinik the guy who used to play this opening world champion who said most positional ideas are based on small tactics so little little tactics as we go along this is the developing move it looks very normal and i can even potentially think about playing this this b4 b4 move at some point now if i go bishop d3 he will take my bishop so i don't know the other idea i could have done is put my bishop on c2 first but i think the way i'm playing it makes a lot of sense because i feel that this is certainly a move blair has to consider he might play b6 here because then if i take that knight he does want to take towards the center like i say if he if he continues with some plan of trying to gain space on the queen side with a4 I will go bishop takes. So he, he's avoiding those ideas when the queen can be exchanged. Now, to b4 or not to b4. Well, if he takes there, it's 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 certainly not that stupid, I feel, to go b4. b3 is more restrained and then finish the development. I could even try to put the pawn on h4, h4 here and then continue with this kind of thing. But I don't really now want him playing this move a4. I mean, if I took the knight off, it's probably even, I, I'd imagine. So let's have a look at the most aggressive move, b4. And then I expect he takes, so I undouble my pawns, and maybe he puts his knight on e6. And in that position, I'm just thinking what I would play there. Um, I'm kind of thinking, in the English, you want to do it a little bit more slowly often and i'm thinking actually i don't know this is interesting i have to look at this afterwards i've got to think about these little decisions I, i'd rather start moving forwards when i've completed my development so I, i'm thinking now a4 well i want to meet a4 with b4 i actually want to keep my double pawns because i want to cover the d4 square so i think i think i'm just going to go for this move here b3 don't know if that was best but i've got a very solid structure and the idea is if he goes a4 i go b4 and i kick that knight away and i'm always going to go b4 at some stage but what i the way i'm playing it here i'm just trying to wait until maybe there's a better opportunity now i could also be considering actually even going knight d3 and getting rid of that knight like that and trying to prove that my dark square bishop is a stronger piece okay now he's castled this way sensible development i think before i decide what i want to do i want to move my bishop now bishop d3 am i worried about him taking that his knight looks pretty good it's like his best piece so i, I think if i go bishop d3 and he takes it i'm reasonably happy there reasonably happy and I think this is where I want my bishop to control this one. Now, the other thing I can do is to start pushing on the king side. But I feel I want my pawn on h8 this square first. And that's very risky because I won't be able to castle there. Now, what's his plan going to be? Is it going to be to play this? Well, if he plays that, I can always go g4. Maybe g4 is a good move anyway because it stops f5 kind of like g4 but i have to also think about the f4 square whenever you move pawns you give away squares and he does have the f4 square so i'm going back now to thinking get my bishop out and am i i'm not worried about his knight moving then g4 so where am i gonna put the bishop bishop e2 bit passive i'm gonna go bishop d3 let's go bishop d3 because this is my worst bishop why is this my worst bishop because if you look at where my pawns are placed, my most advanced ones, they're all on light squares. And my light square bishop is a bad piece because it's trapped behind all my pawns. So I'm offering him to exchange off his good knight for my bad bishop. My good bishop is the dark square bishop because it's on the opposite color to my pawns, meaning it can work around them. 
He can work around those pawns. So he's simply developing, and now I've got to decide where I put my king. Putting it over there is risky. I think I will castle. It doesn't mean I can not, I don't, you know, I'm giving up attacking plans. I can still attack over there, but I can do it in a slow way. Even putting it on g2 is not stupid. But I think castling makes the most sense here. And then I've completed my development and I might even be playing f4, right? That looks like a better break. This looks more, this looks more dangerous. So let's just castle. I've got a solid position and now I can think about what pawn to push. I've completed my development now. Um, now I could have gone bishop h3 to try to swap with his bishop. That, that wasn't a stupid idea positionally because his bishop is okay. But I'm quite happy, even though it's here, it might have potential later on. For example, when I play f4, let's say these pawns get exchanged there. If I can ever move my e-pawn, suddenly my bishop becomes free. It's just at the moment it's not. So often what happens in the English, because you've got such a solid position, you have complete your development. And then you think about what pawn pushes to make, you know. And all, what I'm doing all throughout this, I'm stopping Blair having any breaks. This is the important thing. So what I mean by that is, I don't know if I'm stopping him, but I'm trying to stop him. I'm stopping him going A4 because I go B4. I'm stopping play D5. That's covered. I'm stopping him. I'm thinking he might try to go F5, but I can cover that with like G4. He, he can't really, he doesn't really have any breaks. So if he doesn't have any breaks, he can't really improve his position so much. On the other hand, I seem to have the longer term potential because I have the pawn breaks. Remember, pawn breaks can make your position worse, but okay, so now Blair is trying to work out if he can break. So we've got to consider this. Well, b5, I can just win a pawn there. And d5 here, remember, if he starts breaking, it could make his pawn structure a lot, um, open up my bishops. So this is the move to consider. So this one, and that is a pawn break he's trying to achieve. Now I do, I do have this one, but now he's going to take my bishop. So f4 now, do I, am I looking at playing f4? Because if he goes d5, I can take that pawn and, and this will open up my bishops. If he goes pawn takes, I go pawn takes. And then my queen has, I'm thinking here takes, takes, he moves his bishop back. And I may even then play bishop takes here, pawn takes with two very nice pawns. My knight on it, I like this move f4 a lot actually, because I'm also thinking of going f5 and doing a pawn storm. And this is a typical idea in the English. When they have a knight on f6, once you finish your development, you put your pawn on f5. So I think this is principally the best move because I've got two bishops, I want to open up, and now it seems to be my best pawn break. So I'm going to play it, I'm going to play this move. And he can't move his bishop into these squares. This is where my knight is very well, very well placed. And in this position, he's got to do something about this. So the point is, if he takes, I'm going to take with my pawn. And one idea I have there, funnily enough, is to go bishop takes knight. And then I feel my two pawns here are quite mobile. And this bishop on d3 might come to life. Like I say, if I ever play e5 later on, after doing the correct exchanges, that bishop becomes good. Now, I don't think bishop c2 is a very good move because he can just go d5. You're not maybe paying attention to what black's plan is. And remember, why? why you, the most important thing is chess is to look at your opponent's move. And the one thing the English opening teaches you more than any other opening is to look at your opponent's move and try to consider what to play, you know, how to stop his plan. So if he plays d5, I mean, I, I have no idea why, why, why you're saying black is better after e takes f4, uh, because it improves my pawn structure. I have more pawns in the center. I, I don't see that at all. I, I think completely opposite. I think black is worse after that. Yeah, if you're gonna, you have to give it at least a explanation Tom Tazu, why that is a reason. You can't, I mean, it's okay to say our oh, white's better, but you've got to give a reason. And I, I think I'm giving reasons here that I get more pawns in the center. I get rid of his strong central pawn. So that that's 
you know, please, whenever you're going to make an assessment, and you, you should get in this habit in chess. This is why I'm sort of going, I'm not angry, but I'm saying loads of people say this. But one thing Bronstein said to me is that you've got to back up what you're thinking, because that's the way to improve your chess. My king's quite safe. My king, I don't see why um, it is, is bad. Stop looking at the computer. How's the computer going to help you? If you're analyzing this computer, you're doing totally the wrong thing. Totally the wrong thing. Um, Magnus plays lots of openings which the computer says are bad. You're not going to learn anything at all by looking at a computer. You, you can't go to a computer when you're playing. It's the ideas behind the moves. I mean, I really do. I really do think if you want to get better at chess, turn the computer off. It's not going to tell you why you're playing ideas. I really, really, as you can see, um, I'm not, you know, not get annoyed, but it depends if you want to improve or not. I, I do just, I think so many people just rely on computers. They will never get better at chess if that's the case. Never. Okay, so now I have two ideas. I can go bishop takes here, pawn takes, and then try winning a pawn. But then I, I don't like it. The normal plan is f5. And this is much better, I feel. f5, the bishop goes back to c8. Blair's going to try to break with this move. But I can at least in that position, worst case, take here, move my queen, and then I have a free attack on the king side. So... Um, I, I think f5 is correct, but I, I, and I'm running out of time. This is a problem with this. So I'm going to play f5. It, it, it's nearly always, this is the typical English plan. And again, I, I mean, it, I, you know, the computer might disagree with me. Sure. The problem was if I didn't do anything quickly, he's going d5. And remember what I said about looking out for your opponent's breaks and he might be going d5 now. So this, if I can stop him playing d5, I'm doing very well here. And one way to do that is to simply take his knight and play queen f3 then with a simple advantage because I have an attack, he doesn't, but maybe he can hold the draw. But I, I might do this because my time's getting low and I'm just going to, and this, the, because of the f pawn, I have a very nice advantage, but I'd rather keep the flexibility. But can I do that? Let's see. If I go g4, d5, g5, knight takes e4 and my position actually collapses there, actually collapses g4 d5 is the problem now if i go this move he's always playing d5 and if he gets d5 in my position could actually become worse then i agree and i don't want to allow this opening so unless i can't stop this my backup plans to take here can't see a way to stop it at the moment because d5 is is you've got to look out for your opponent's breaks you must Look out for your opponent's breaks. It's so important to look at your opponent's plans. That is such a freeing move. I don't want to allow that. So I look a little bit longer. D5. I just can't see a move there that I can play. Here, knight takes. No, I don't like that at all. Uh, I think I have to take his knight. I don't see any other option. But the reason I think I'm better here is because it goes back to that way of thinking and the way of thinking, I don't know about bishop c2 because he goes d5. I mean, this is the problem. d5, I had to stop that move. And he doesn't have any pawn breaks that are good now. Whilst I have this slow plan over here. Now, I could go g4 straight away. He's going to move his knight and try to cover that one. But I think I'm going to bring my queen to f3 first. Now, I might not have, you know, any notable advantage here at all but my plan is easier to attack on this area of the board and the english will teach you to to uh look at your opponent's ideas and you know stop them so okay what pawn breaks well he can go there but i don't think that helps him if he ever goes b5 at the moment i'm covering that but again i don't think it achieves much so we're kind of equal over there he can't break with any of his pawns on the king's side, but I do have g4, g5, f6. So it seems to me this is why I'm slightly better here. I have a plan and my opponent doesn't have a plan. I could be wrong, but um, the computer might give this as equal. Again, this is why I think it's important to not always get too carried away with what the computer says. Because again, you've got to think about things as if you were playing. If you really want to get better, of course. Uh, and, um, you know, okay, so Blair is just trying to gang up over here. Now, G4 looks right. 
I'm not worried about this one. This one is well defended. The knight does a great job. I have to. I'm running out of time, so I'm going to have to move a little bit quicker. I'm assuming he's going to play h6 here and try to go knight h7 and hold me up there. And one thing I could do that will be a bit disappointing in this game is to, you know, if my clock, if I if I run, if I lose on time somehow. Now h6 must be his correct way of playing. Then h4, knight h7, holding up my break. And how would I play there? Queen g3. And I can then try to play for this move in a, in the long run. He has to play h6 here, I think. I think he has to play this move. Other, other moves other moves not... I mean, I can against h6 play queen e3, trying to gain a tempo there. He plays b6, and then I play g5 immediately. Okay, well, he's allowed my pawn to go forwards. Now, he's not threatening to take there because my knight does this grand job. This is Magnus Carlsen's idea. So I think I'm going to go g5 and h4. And it's very hard for Blair to break open here. Maybe h6 was even a mistake because of this queen e3, and then g5. And now f6 is tempting. We have to. I'm just trying to calculate if this is no I, i'm running out of time so i'm going to play h4 and you can see that you know even though the position is probably even i've got this long-term initiative on the king side i would i can do my i think my bishop is very safe look my knight has done the fantastic job and my knight can jump out here to attack a bit later on the other thing i want to do is now think about which pawn break to make but i'm going to maybe now get my rooks to g2 and g1 double up rooks on the g file so when i break with one of these moves when i break with one of these moves it opens up the black king and it's this i mean really the story of this game so far i feel is restraining black's ideas so i'm trying to stop him doing anything this move i just take it a4 doesn't achieve anything he, he doesn't really have a plan and that that is what the english will teach you that's what the english will teach you um, the English, the, the reason I always recommend the English as a good opening is because it's against what a lot of people, it's the, it will help you improve in the best way. And I'm sorry if I was being harsh there about the computer use, but you know, I, I you know, it, it, I really do think that if you want to improve the biggest mistake, I, the two biggest mistakes I see people doing is going too computer obsessive. Computers won't really help you improve as a club player. They just won't. They can help, but you have to be very careful how you use them. And the other thing that's very important is to think about your opponent's ideas. Club players don't do this enough. When you look at the top players, top grandmasters always try to restrain their opponent's ideas. But club players, they only look at their own ideas and they might have allowed black to play d5 in that position. And had black played d5 in the position black might have just got a got a got an advantage so this is what the english teaches you in essence it's a, a restraining move so it'll improve your chess knowledge because you have to learn how to get into your opponent's mind so even though the opening is a very good opening it's one opening the best opening for teaching you restraining prophylactic play playing like carlson playing like magnus playing like karpov playing in these ways that's that's what that's that's what i i think personally now, what should black play here? I don't think it's so easy because if he does move a pawn on the king side, it gives me a natural way through. If he goes f6, I may just go queen e3, defending that pawn. And then later on, when I get my rook to the g file, I've got the option of taking on f6. If he goes g6, one simple idea is to play f6. And then my pawn on f6 always has check mating ideas ah oh, thank you very much for the raid alicia that's very kind of you hello hope you're doing well and, and all good cheers very kind of the raid and thank you everyone who's come over from the raid of alicia's channel um haven't streamed for a while i'm doing a long play game here against a, a player who's feed day master strength and i'm explaining my ideas and the way that a grandmaster thinks in the hope um in the hope that uh you know you'll learn something and if you um we just we saw one of your videos in the spi spicy gambit so okay well i, I hope it I hope it was spicy enough 
I hope so. Thank you for watching. Um, and people are saying they loved your Scandi tutorial as well. Um, and now I always win against the Scandinavian. Oh, well, that's that's always good. Hype. Well, actually, we're playing. We're trying to play a more positional game here uh, with the English opening. So do go and check out Alicia's videos on chess.com and there's loads of good videos there for everyone to watch. And let me just think about this position. So Blair is now threatening to take on e on D3. And again, the first thing we've got to do is um, is play, is look at our opponent's move. So we've got to stop this idea. Is he going to try to break with B5 later on? He's trying to get some activity. Now, if I move my rook... It's not so silly. Um, that's not a rook. That's not called a rook, is it? That's called a bishop. If I move my bishop, he comes into d2. But in actual fact, I can then play rook d1. And I can try to take over this file, funnily enough. Because I'm threatening to take there and go rook d1. So this is not so stupid. But maybe I go rook d1 first. Because I don't see... Let's just play this move. I, I don't see what he's doing with his pieces. I mean, I could have allowed him into here with some ideas, but I'm trying to restrain Black's idea. This is what this game's all about. And now he has broken with this move. But can... Okay, so we did kind of expect this, but if he takes here, I'm taking with the bishop. And I can also now play bishop d2. Is he going to try to push on with this pawn? I don't want to allow this bishop out, so I don't want to allow... Him to, okay, the time's getting short as well. I've got to remember... The, this is actually a bit of a... And he, maybe he wants b4 on the board. Maybe this is what he wants. Now, we have to just think how to handle this idea. Because he has got a bit of pressure on d file. And if I go bishop to e2, this b4 move is quite annoying. This is the one move I'm kind of fearing. Not fearing, but then if he moves my c pawn, he has the d4 square. So maybe I should have thought a bit more about my last move. But... Okay, I'm getting short of time. So I've allowed him play. There's knight here working. Rook takes here. Knight takes... Oh, God. Tactics. Knight here. Rook takes here. Knight takes e5. Rook takes queen. It's not working, clearly. Now, maybe I go bishop e2 now. Because I want to take over the d file. This is the one problem I have. And I'm worried about my opponent going b4, distracting this pawn away. And when this pawn moves away, putting his rook on d4. And if he gets that structure, it's going to be very hard for me to make progress. So what I've done by this move, I'm just going to try to go rook takes rook and rook d1. And then I get rid of those threats. I, did also have, I do also have other ideas of attacking his weak pawn on c5. These are his best pieces, his rooks on the D files. So I think my best plan is to try and exchange all these off, yeah? I still have this massive advancement over here on the king side. It's like, it's a plague. It's a plague of pawns. Um, by the way, we do get 10 seconds of move, so I'm hoping I don't get flagged. But it wouldn't be the first time I get flagged. I'm, I'm very good at getting flagged. Um, so... I'm I'm thinking, yeah, just to exchange everything here because look, his bishop's very bad here and his knight's very bad. And I have this, these two pawns are real targets. My knight later on can come into this square. This is another good idea, which I didn't even see. Knight d3, I've only just seen this and I think someone actually just po point this out as well. Seren Zolomas, because when my knight gets to this square, these two pawns are very bad. So I think my general idea exchange everything off put my knight here and simply win one of these guys i don't even need to use my pawns over here okay so now the natural idea would be to take but i've got knight d3 now and if i take takes takes okay knight d3 looks very tempting because it might be winning a pawn knight d3 pawn takes i don't want to take there because i get in the pin but if I take on this square, knight d3 takes, take on e5, take on c4. Knight d3 looks very strong to me. And if he takes, I can take. If I ever take, he can't take here. Knight d3 must be good. 
Um, and the reason this night is actually such a good night later on, yeah? And the point here is if he takes on c4, my simple idea is to take and then take there, winning a pawn. I have to be a bit careful about taking c5 because queen a7 and he puts my knight in a pin, even though that may be possible if I go queen f2. This one seems to be my main threat. And because my bishop's guarding this one, I think I'm okay. No, oh, oh God, did I nearly, I nearly, I nearly mouse slip there, you idiot. <laughs> okay, he's found a good move. He's defending. And if I take here, ah, he takes here. This is annoying. So what if I go rook, queen e3 now? And then if he takes here, knight takes here, takes here, takes takes bishop takes my knight is slightly better i'm running out of time i've got queen here as well i'm running out of time though here it's a pity when you sp okay this one looks good to me i've got to move this is defended and i couldn't take there straight away because after exchange on d1 his queen would take my knight with check so all i'm doing is increasing the pressure against this pawn which is a very weak pawn, and his knight is so bad, his knight can't defend. So we're going to go for this move here. And the reason I think this might be good is because I'm gaining, hopefully gaining a tempo, attacking his uh, bishop on a3. By the way, if I miss any subscriptions, uh, I'm sorry, but thank you for Mar Pants who subscribed. So... Blair Blair's a very good player, of course, and he's defending very well here. I might not be able to explain the moves as well now because um, uh, because of the time constraints, but the, the opening has worked incredibly well. His pawns are now broken. I have this ideas over here. I have a very strong knight, queen defending. My bishop can tuck itself up on e2 nice and safely, and his real problem is what to do with a bishop. So he's given up a piece. Now I was wondering about this when I was thinking, ah, oh, do I, okay, do I get involved? He takes here. I don't want to allow that. We, we don't need to complicate. So I've got to decide, do I take with a bishop and then go for some, G then attack here, which I like because I could take with a pawn, but bishop takes. Now I'm gaining a, a tempo on his bishop. If I took the bishop, he, took so he captures on a2. This way, I'm trying to have ideas of hitting f7. And now this is, of course, not a winning position for me, but it must be better. Now I've got to work out, like, bishop c8, g6. Let's say he takes and goes knight d6 there. Okay, so now he, he's playing like this. So g6 looks like the right move. I also have just king f2. Nice, positional, safe move. But he's going to put his knight here next anyway. So g6, to me, is now using those pawns on that side of the board using my bishop and i haven't got much time so we're going to play this one we're going to play it quickly because my bishop and knight are now fantastically placed so you can see as soon as the pieces come come forwards they come to life now he is defending that one and i would not be surprised if there's some tactic here but i can't see it at the moment now do i just play h5 I might defend my queen so my knight can move. Oh, 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 then he has queen takes knight. Queen takes queen, knight takes here, check. Bloody hell. That is a nasty tactic. Um, That's a nasty tactic he's got there. And that has kind of thrown me. So he's actually threatening this one anyway. Okay, we have to take there. We get 10 seconds of move. And now I think... I have to play king f2. This is the best way to play. You saw all those tactics with the knight jumping in. If his knight was on d6, he would have queen takes c5, queen takes queen, knight e4. So even though you're trying to play a positional game, tactics are often going to come in. But I'm better here. He's in a pin. And look at, my, look at my minor pieces. My minor pieces are dominating. And he can't move much. He can't move much at the moment. One idea I have... Oh, no, don't, don't pre-move. Oh, God. Okay, so he, he's had to come back to the, to go passive. And now a simple move like knight e3, I like this one. Because his e-pawn is very weak, and I'm just threatening knight takes e5. I'm keeping the pressure on that one. So he has to move his queen. And now my queen can come in. So queen c5. Again, 
I'm threatening knight takes e5. He's in a horrible pin. And his position is crumbling now, I think. He can't move his king because a queen f8 checkmate. And I think this is just lost for him. So he's, he's, oh, he's finding moves all the time. Sign of a resourceful player. Now I could take there and take here, but do, do I, can I play this one? And if check, does he have a draw? Can my king get to a3? I think taking here, I put my king on a3 and I avoid the checks. Oh, he comes this way. I forgot he comes this way. Oh. Ah. Ah, I just didn't have enough time. I forgot he comes to d Oh, I'm glad he's come this way. I'm trying to get my king to a3. Oh, he's got bishop a6. Shouldn't have allowed that. That was silly. But he can never take this knight. If my king gets to a3, he runs out of checks and I'm winning a piece on f7. So my idea is to, I mean, run away this way. So let's see if I can run away this way. He can't take my knight because his knight is pinned like this. So I shouldn't have allowed that one either. I'm not playing this very well. I'm getting a little bit freaked out by the time. But I'm hoping I should. I mean, I didn't need to allow him to win that pawn, did I? I didn't need to allow him to win that pawn. That was silly. It's funny, even when you play the most positional of games, chess always ends up in tactics, it seems. That's why tactical play is very important. But I think I'm I think I'm just winning now. I'm threatening bishop takes queen f8 checkmate. And if he checks me, my king gets to a3. And he has no more checks on this square. He has no more checks. So, okay, so he does have to resign uh, in, in this position. Oh, well, that got a little bit of tense. That got a little bit tense at the end. And Blair, uh, Ushko de Bear is Barbary McCure, Macaque in the chat. So thanks, Blair. So we'll say thanks, Blair, in the chat. And that's not how you spell, spell Blair. That's how you spell. That's, why can't I type today? There we go. Thank you. <laughs> that's how you type. I can't even type today. Can't even type. Um, so I think that was a pretty pretty okay play game um from both of us Blair went a little bit passive at times now you know as a training process what we're trying to do here and this is what you guys should do if you want to get better you know it's playing blitz chess especially bullet is is even if anything bad for your chess the only time I'd say blitz chess is good for your chess is to test out openings that you've learned so for example let's say you buy the course above you think you've memorized it you think you've got the ideas, you're ready to play it. You go and play like loads of games, loads of games of Blitz. And, um, and then you look at your Blitz games and you'll realize the variations where you're strongest and weakest, what you need to learn more. Then you go back and learn some more. But the best thing to do is to analyze your games afterwards. This is what the Soviet School of Chess did. And what I mean by that is Botvinnik, who this opening is named after, is really one of the founding members of the Soviet School of Chess which was so strong in the 1970s around then, you know, even before then, should we say 1950s. And their biggest, the thing that they said to get better, the most important thing is to, is to really, really analyze your games deeply after you play them. They didn't have computers, so try to analyze them with a buddy or try to be very critical. I would say analyze your games without a computer first maybe see where you can improve and maybe compare it to the games of top players use use some tools like chess base we're, we're bringing out something ginger gem soon where you can do that um or you can analyze them sometimes the using the computer is okay in case you miss something what we're going to do because we don't have the time to go deeply into analysis i'm going to analyze this on chess.com and you guys i'll be looking at your comments and we're going to see where both of us could improve because when you analyze a game, if I get the same opening again, I want to know if I can improve on my play. I want to know what I did right and what I did wrong. This is the way to improve, even in the middle game, and try to work out your weaknesses. So let's go to a game report now. And uh, it's just building up. I'll just readjust the screen. You won't be able to see me, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? And our accuracy levels are not very high, but you know what? 
we don't always listen to the computers and that's what I, that's why that's why i get annoyed about people who you know are i mean using the computers too much i mean this is just a guide this is just a guide yeah this is a guide it's not god's rule that's for sure now i may have made a mistake somewhere but i'm not even going to believe the computers 100 percent. so let's just have a look i think it was actually quite a good game personally and so the opening you can keep an eye on what the computer says here of course um let's go for it and now this is all book now e4 it says it's excellent and again uh e4 i mean again people are saying oh the position's better for black uh earlier on because some computer says better for black now if you look to the computer here you would see that the computer thinks black is half a pawn up now you tell that to magnus carlson in his most important match i know he plays the bong cloud and loads of other rubbish but when he's playing for the world championship and he's trying to become world champion you only see him playing absolutely brilliant brilliant opening ideas and this is what he played to become world champion so don't all, that's just an example of why computers are bad i'm not saying computers are rubbish when did i ever say that i just said they're not good to improve with if you want to improve as a human you can't play like a computer no human can play like a computer what you should do is have your own thoughts maybe base some of your uh, analysis on the computer but of course computers aren't rubbish computers are stronger than humans but no com human can play like a computer if you want to improve as a human you've got to think for yourself it's so so you know it's uh, it's so so true uh, I mean, you can just try to memorize all the computer's lines, um, but that that is not, in my opinion, a very good way of doing it because you don't understand the ideas. You've got to understand the ideas, and that's what I was trying to show in this game. Now, of course, uh, if Ansel saying computers are best for improvement if you know how to use them, well, they are very good for improvement, I agree, but you've got to know how to use them. You don't just look at the assessment here and say oh i'm white here look if you were just using the computer here you'd be like looking at the assessment you'd be saying oh i'm not playing this opening because i'm half a pawn down and does that help you actually understand chess better of course it doesn't so let's move on now this is what um anand play this is we're playing what magnus carlson did against anand here and even though it says white's worse i don't believe that thank you for the subscription uh there patch and now i'm just continuing with the magnus carlson plan and the thing is here i'm not paying attention to computer because i saw how magnus carlson played i tried to get into magnus carlson Mag magnus carlson's head and i was thinking what he's trying to do and i saw that his setup was putting the knight here which is a fantastically good knight good knight and the problem with this position computers can't really understand it because there's no activity for black and now bishop e3 I think all these moves are quite normal. B B4 was interesting, but I think it's a little bit too quick. And after some more developing moves, Bishop D3. Look, look how much, look how bad it thinks my position is. It's crazy. And Bishop E6, castles, C6, good move. So what should he have played? Okay, so in this position, it thinks I'm nearly a pawn down, and it thinks that Black should take here. Now, what do I take with? Well, I might even take with a queen, and it reckons I'm in a lot of trouble here, which is absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. <laughs> if anything, I like black. I, I like white. I mean, I'm saying I don't like black because black doesn't have any pawn breaks still. It's saying some plan like this, but we can even go g4. I mean, I'm, I'm sure black is okay, but that's not the point. If you know what you're doing in certain positions, it's much more important than what the computer says. You've got to know your plans. And here, as we discussed, if you saw the start of the stream, is known the pawn breaks. And after this one, it feels to me that I'm doing well. Now, I, I know someone mentioned the computer move was to take on f4. Um, maybe this was best. And then it says taken on. And then it says, oh, okay. The only reason I could, I uh, you know, we use computers if we miss tactics. And now it's saying black can take here. Wow. Now, I may have missed this tactic, because if black can't take here, I think we're doing very well with our nice pawns. The queen's coming to f3. We might even attack down the g-file. So I maybe missed this tactic, and this is where computers are good. 
for spotting tactics that even strong human players don't see. And I did not see this tactic. And obviously, when you're doing an opening preparation, you can use computers to help you spot tactics like this. And uh, this is this is certainly a tactic I missed. Um, okay, so let's have a look at this. So if I play now, knight takes e4. Wow, knight takes d3, and all of a sudden the problem is if queen takes, you have this tactic. That's amazing. That's something I hope I would see in a proper game, but I might not. So I probably have to sack a pawn here with knight d3 and try to play for f5. And this is quite interesting because after this move, can we go f5 straight away with an interesting attacking position? So I agree, that is a tactic that I missed that might change the assessment. But for humans to see this, it's really bizarre, that move. So probably, even though it says, OK, maybe I should wait with f4 then. So maybe I should even just take that knight off straight away, getting to a sort of position we're familiar with. Let's move on. So after some more moves, if and this is a very important part of the game. Now, the computer doesn't like my move. Bishop takes c5. There may well be a better move. But when you're a human, you want to play the most. You want to play when you're a human. Uh, thank you for subscribing there. You want to play the simplest plan, a plan where you don't have to think too much, calculate too much, which gives you an advantage you feel for free. And in this position, I thought bishop takes c5 was that plan. But the computer says it's an inaccuracy and I'm worse here. And again, I'm disagreeing with the computer here. Blair also thinks this is strong. And I think it's strong because if we just think like a human, who has the plans here? Who has the plans? I have the plan as we saw in the game, and black doesn't have the plan. So even though this is supposed to be a mistake, it's a simple way to play. Now, what else? Let's go for the computer's move. It says I should play g4. Now, this this is the move I want to play, but I didn't know what I was doing after d5. And if you can't, sometimes you have to base your positional things on tactical awareness. And in this game, my tactical awareness, as we saw, was lacking a little bit. But I couldn't see a solution here. So now this is where computers come in handy. The computer is saying pawn takes here and it reckons white is fine. But this is very risky when there's a rook lined up here. Let's. What happens if I take here? Let's see. And now it just says g5. And if I had more time, hopefully I'd spot this idea. But it might well be right that this is working out well. But this is complex. This is a complex position. This is complex and you really have to spend a lot of time assessing this position, which is very hard to assess. In some ways, my move of playing bishop takes c5 is much more simple. And after pawn takes, queen f3 looks okay, rook d6, but I don't really see what black's doing on d-file, g4. Now, this is where I thought Blair may have made a mistake, personally. I thought he should stop this g5 move and play h6. And again, this move is recommended. It thinks black's better, totally disagree because there's no plan black has. And I can still aim to go g5 in the long run. My first thought, what if I go queen e3 and then try to play this straight away? This is this is number one. But maybe the problem here is I allow his knight into this square. So I need to prepare this idea first. Maybe even something like bishop e2 is not so silly. And I'm going to try to prepare this break g5. Maybe even like this. This seems, again, much easier for a human to play, even even if the computer doesn't agree. Maybe black is fine here, but it's it's not easy for black to play. So it's, again, it, we're showing the difference between different ways of thinking in different positions. And you've got to, I think, see the plans, know what you're trying to do, know why you're playing an opening, what kind of plans are you trying to achieve in the middle game. And you've got to notice when you play any opening. So you pick an opening. You should know the middle game plans. Let's go back because obviously Blair's a very strong player. And he played a kind of natural looking move. But I agree that this may be a mistake because after h4 here, he's very cramped now. And this is much... I, I feel white should be much better here. As the game went on, okay, we just played this one. B5. B5... B5 looks like the most scariest move for me to work out. If black doesn't play this move, what on earth can black ever do? Black's just got to sit here and suffer. For example, black's got no breaks and I can just improve my position and get ready to break over here. 
eventually. So I understand this move. Again, this is this is a move to play, but maybe it is a mistake because as we saw in the game, after knight d3, even f6 starting attack, it thinks is good. But this is now pretty much a winning advantage for me. So this is, yeah, this is a winning edge for me, this position, uh, because now the pawns are very bad. And uh, we can see, I don't think I let it slip too much. Oh, as soon as I say that, I say, I don't think I let it slip too much. And it goes from plus one and a half to equal. Oh, my words. Wow. And did I? Okay, so now the point is, if Blair takes this straight away, another tactic that the computers pick up on, but in a real game, what are we actually learning from this? In a, you know, How can I avoid such a move in the future? It's not like, oh, I'm, I've neglected my dart squares. What I've actually done here, I've not calculated moves that can change the essence of the position as well. But this is something, again, I mean, the computer points out, but I don't think humans can learn from this individual move. But OK, this the point is now I can't go bishop takes here. And maybe if I take on a6 with the knight, he has this problem here. What if I just take this one? Uh, it now says after bishop takes here, this position all of a sudden is OK for black. And I can see why the computer thinks that because he's got rid of my good bishop, even though I'm still a bit surprised that I'm not a little bit better here with my good knight and better pawn structure. But that was maybe Blair's last chance because after the very natural rook takes rook and bishop takes and bishop takes b3, my pieces really do dominate the position. Um, and now queen a7 pinning the knight, but I'm still winning. g6, knight d6, and I nearly played king here now. I nearly played this one. And this would have allowed queen takes c5 and, oh, actually the computer doesn't like that. What the hell? And then this one. And it, okay, the computer says I'm losing here. What? Oh no, it says the computer's winning. Okay. But anyway, there's some nasty tactic like that. So this is much better to distract that knight away from its natural square. And now my queen is defended and the rest is quite easy, actually. There was one moment later on, I should say, well, I was very short of time that after this one, I think I put my queen in the wrong square. If he went queen d2, can I can I get out? I can. I thought there might be a perpetual check here. This is another. But actually, he has no checks after king f3. That's unbelievable. I thought he might have some perpetual check because I only had seconds left. But he doesn't even have one check. <laughs> well, the only checks he have lose his queen. So that's quite funny. I, I didn't see that one. And after queen h4 check, I should maybe find a better square. Am I still winning after this move? Probably, but I allow the bishop in. But I think I'm still winning. Okay, my king's always coming to a3 in the long run. And when my king gets to this square, he loses the knight on f7. So it is uh, winning. Well, that was kind of kind of all a bit bizarre, yeah? Uh, a bit of a bizarre game when you put it put it on the beast afterwards. Um, I mean, the one thing I would say, I'm being harsh to the harsh to computer users, but all I'm saying is if you're serious about getting better at chess, which I'm sure a lot of, you know, you can just play chess, blitz chess, not really want to improve for the rest of your life and have a lot of fun. But, you know, it is fun improving. It's, it's fun getting better at anything in life, surely. Uh, and the way to do that is, you know, cut down on your bullet and your blitz, even though it's a lot of fun, restrict yourself. Play these longer time limits where you can really analyze the openings that you want to play and the more you do that the more you analyze your longer time limit games the more you will improve your opening play your middle game play so what can i learn from that let's say you know i'm a grandmaster i can learn from that so what i can learn from that is i will look at the opening again even though i've just done it for the course above it's one of the lines i'm least familiar with i'm much more familiar with some of the other variations in the english because I played some of the other variations for 15 years of my life. Experience in positions gets you better. Um, and when can we see a drunk stream? Well, I'm sure I won't be able to resist too long for one of them. And the other thing um, I can learn myself is that when you're trying to break with a move like F4, I, I just got to have, there was a couple of tactical abilities, vision, where I might have even suggested I'm, I build up my position a little bit first. 
So maybe if in this position, I broke with this move a bit too quickly. And later on, we saw that I allowed Blair to maybe take on b3. Maybe in the future, I play something like queen d2 and just shore up my position here. Um, but all in all, I think I think it was a pretty good game. And again, like I mentioned before, if you want to support me, you want to learn this opening in a real amount of detail. The course above is a chessboard course I've just finished doing. It's on sale for another week, I feel, five days. It's a lot of money, I understand that. But if you do learn it, this 20 hour course, and it's 20 over 20 hours of videos. So if you do an hour a day, two hours a day for a couple of weeks, you spend a couple of weeks studying this, you'll learn the opening, you'll have this brilliant opening, and you'll have an opening for life. It will, I guarantee that will make you a better player, even if you brought my Jababa stuff, because it tells you to do these moves about stopping your opponent's ideas. So you can click on the link for that. I'll just give you the link in case you're interested. Again, like I say, it does support me. It means I can do more free streams and stuff like that. And what I mean by free streams is it means I can do stuff which educational like this for free, you know, so you can learn for free. So let's let's just have a look at your comments. Uh, I'd love a King's Gambit course. Well, the next one I'm going to do, I'm gonna actually going to do quite a fun course next. I'm going to do a Gambit course. Because that this one above is a serious course for those of you who want to really get better. I'm going to do a Gambit course, which is a bit more like when you're drunk and you just want to hack someone up. <laughs> That's the next thing. By the way, what, what, what do people think of the great artwork behind me? This got sent in by someone, and I really like it. I think it's a cool piece of artwork. Um, thank you for buying it. Beam me up, Scotty. It's most appreciated. It helps me, and it helps you. If you can afford it, it will make you a better chess player. It's been very well researched, so do consider it. It, it, it. I'm very, you know, thank you so much for anyone who does buy it. Um, okay, drunk, drunk stream. I haven't done a drunk stream for a while, actually. I used to do far too many of them, but I haven't done one. Maybe maybe, maybe that will be on the agenda at some point. Um, and so, uh, do you don't think Blitz is good for drilling openings specifically? Well, I do. I think playing Blitz is is good if you know the opening first and you just want to practice it then blitz can be good but make sure you know what what you're trying to learn first i don't think it's good for tactical ability or anything like that um and thank you anyone else who joined in the stream i think i'm going to end the stream now as you can see i'm streaming every day this week check out the times below um i'm supposed to be streaming at 6 p.m today but i've got my times completely wrong I'm in another world at the moment, so uh, that 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 was a little bit little bit silly. Um, so um, yeah, um, and we're going to raid someone now. Now I'm just going to have a look at who to raid. We could raid Anna, who's a very good friend of mine. But um, should we? Yeah, go on. Let's raid Anna. Um, we haven't Anna. Anna has got loads of followers, which is good. She's great. So we're going to go and do a little raid for Anna. I'll see you all soon. Hopefully see you tomorrow. I think it's quite early tomorrow. I'm streaming. If you're if maybe if you're late in America and stuff. I I, I mean, I know she's got enough followers, Anna, but uh, she's a good friend. So we raid her. I was going to raid Ellen as well. Ellen's another person who, who deserves a good old raid. Uh, I know Ellen from Denmark as well. But OK, I'll see you all soon. Thank you for tuning in. Think about buying my course above. Uh, it helps me and I'll see you soon. Thanks, Blair, for the game. Thank you all. Cheers. Goodbye.